Yadubar Prabhu was telling us about how she moved to Sharanagati. She and Dina Tarani Devi, they built straw bale house out of natural products. And you know, we built natural houses in our farm at Govardhan, in Wada. But they live in Canada. It's about five hours from the closest city. And it's covered with snow and freezing cold in the winter. And there's bears all over the place. It's a very austere place. And they live there. It was like an incredible bhajan kutir. And if you go there, it was the spiritual world. They designed that little bhajan kutir. It was beautiful. Meticulously, it was so simple. But every molecular particle was surcharged with their devotion. Everybody could feel it. Nothing was superficial for Yamuna Devi. Everything had a meaning, had a purpose. I used to just examine and just look at every detail. The altar. There was just little places, special places for, for Prabhupada's remnants, special places for everything that belonged to the deities, special places for everything. Their deity worship was meticulous with artistic, loving devotion in every sense, as was their cooking. One time I went there to Shadarnagati, and Malati Devi and Shamsundar, we decided to go, and somehow or other, Yamuna Devi and Malati Devi convinced Janaki to take a long drive, even with her very, very ill health, to come and join us there. And of course, Yadubar Prabhu and Vishaka Devi were there. And we had prasad together. When Dina Tarani Devi and Yamuna Devi cooked, it was a devotional masterpiece. Everything, the way they cut the vegetables, the way they cooked it, the way they kept everything so absolutely spotlessly clean. Even an atheist would have complete faith that this is Radharani's kitchen. <laughs> Seriously. That's the way they prepared everything. And the way they made the plates and the way they served it. Ekavir Prabhu said, when the plate came, what to speak of the things on the plate, the plate itself. You didn't want to eat it. It was almost like an offense to eat it. <laughs> Should like you should you know preserve it forever and put it on the altar and worship it. <laughs> but it tasted so good that there was no way you could possibly not eat it. <laughs> Thinking I never had this in my life to this day. She had about six different flavored chapatis. Incredible. I wish I could remember all the flavors. <laughs> they were like mango chapatis. <laughs> all different flavored chapatis. And each one was so absolutely flaky and tender and delicious in texture in the shape, in the design, in everything. And they were just making and making. And as we're sitting, we were asking, because I was supposed to give a lecture that night. And I said, this is such a historical event. When was the last time that Shamsundar, Malati, 
Jamuna and Janaki were all together in the same place, these four Prabhus. I said, please, let's have a program tonight where all of you speak about Srila Prabhupada. And they said, no, 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 you speak. I said, please, 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 you know, I can speak anytime. I'll speak tomorrow. He said, I'm dying of thirst to hear all of the four of you here speak together. He said, and everybody else will. And Janaki Devi, she said, no, I have not spoken in public for 30 years. Something like that, right? Since about 1970 or something. She said, I have not spoken in public. I'm, there's so many devotees here, I will not do it. And I said, just sitting at the table, taking prasad, you've been sharing so many stories about Prabhupada. Just whatever you said to us, say it. She said, no, no, you're my close friends. We're sitting at a table together, but I can't do it in front of an audience. And then Yamuna Devi said, just pretend that it's just us at the table and just speak. <laughs> and ultimately, only Yamuna Devi could convince her younger sister to agree, to break out of that 30 years of isolation and preaching Krishna consciousness and Prabhupada's glories. So Janaki Devi finally agreed. But then Jamuna Devi said, but the three of them will speak, I'm not going to speak. <laughs> I said, what is this? She said, how can I speak? I live here. It's presumptuous when all these guests are here that I speak. So somehow or other went back and forth and because everybody wanted her to speak, she, she surrendered. And that was such a beautiful historical event. It's absolutely incredible. Sham Sundar Prabhu is just so expert at just churning the nectar from people's hearts. And I was just so amazed to see the dynamics between these three sisters, Dina Tarani Devi, Yamuna Devi, and Janaki Devi. It's quite dynamics are quite inconceivable. We are so blessed in this very temple room on several occasions Yamuna Devi spoke for us sitting right here. She would lead kirtans. She would speak incredible deep memories of Srila Prabhupada. She would speak such powerful, pure, heart-piercing siddhanta of our teachings and our philosophy with such compassion. And that miraculous event, I will just repeat it because it was so inconceivable. Yamuna Devi was here and it was the greeting of the deity's time and we were all sitting in front of the doors and the doors opened and just as the doors opened, the electricity went out. So Govinda Mari Purusham didn't play. There was no electricity. So everyone looked at Yamuna Devi and I asked her, please, you, know, you chant. She said, no, no. And everyone was looking at her, please chant. So she led live, in person, for the greetings of Radha Gopinath. Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Bajami. And I was just thinking that devotees all over the universe would give anything to be here for this moment where Yamuna Devi is live in person greeting the deities. And the most very heart-melting. As soon as she ended, all the lights went on and the electricity came back. 
This is not just some sentimental idea. This is the reality that Sri Sri Radha Gopinath, they wanted her to sing for them. And they orchestrated it perfectly. And we were all the witnesses of this Leela. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.